the Estopinol College of Architecture and Planning at Ball State University. And uh, you see, uh, saw an agenda there. Uh, we're gonna move through things fairly effectively tonight. We've got three categories of awards. Uh, the program that we're um, about to engage is supported by the college's Executive Advisory Board, or EAB. It's a group of about 30 CAP alumni who represent every discipline at CAP. Uh, in addition to this awards process, the EAB serves as a strategic advisory group to college leadership. And we're all very grateful for their generous service. The agenda for this evening um, that you just saw on the screen identifies those three categories uh, of awards. And EAB Chairperson Gary Vance will introduce each award category and then say a few words about each awardee. Then we'll hear a few comments from each recipient. I wanna thank you for joining us today. Uh, we trust that uh, uh, we'll be back to an in-person format next spring at a banquet and sitting next to each other and enjoying good food and drink. Uh, but uh, thank God for the internet, we're able to do something here and, and we really feel like these awards are special enough that uh, we needed to uh, have a venue. So uh, thank you to, to everybody who's participating today. Special thanks to Nina Davis and Val Morris and the CAP staff office who have done um, a great deal of work behind the scenes. And now I will turn it over to uh, EAB Chair Gary Vance. Thanks, Dave. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to the um, award winners. Welcome to their families who have joined them. Welcome to my fellow advisory board members and all CAP alum. It's lovely to have you with us today. Some, for some it's early evenings or some it's maybe mid afternoon. One of the things we just wanted to talk about for a moment is our evolving award program, which is evolving as, as our profession evolves. And one of the first things that we've done is we have worked hard to add alternative careers to the, to the awards. Traditionally, it was, it was a design award. It was for architects that practiced in traditional ways. Well, we, we practice, we do not practice in traditional ways. We do not have traditional jobs. And we wanted to recognize that. We were getting people who were saying, well, I, I'm not gonna apply because it's a, it's a design award and I don't fit that category. So we really have tried very diligently to make it for, to have awards that people recognize who are, have alternative careers. Uh, by my count, we have about half the folks really have what I'd call an alternative career. And that's great as our profession moves. The other thing we wanted to do was follow Ball State University with a gold award. And that is the graduate of the last decade. And that is from recent graduate up to 10 years of experience. And we were missing that from our repertoire of, of awards. And through that process, our, our, when we go, we're going to start with gold awards. I'm amazed at what our gold award winners have done and what they do. And it just shows how quickly graduates today are integrating into architecture. Um, and so it's really been fun to watch that. And so this is the first year we've had gold awards. Universities had it for a couple of decades. And um, so that's good. And so I think the other thing that's, you know, awards for awards sake are not important, but when we view CAP from a national perspective, we're on even playing field with everybody. We, we, our grads can stand up and be counted for and be as good as any other. But what we have to do is we also have to get rid of our Hoosier humility and we have to award and recognize and celebrate our success because that's what everybody else does. And so we have to compete, continue to compete at, at that level, which we do, but this is uh, just part of that. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with our gold awards, our new awards. And I'm only gonna read a couple sentences for each award and other than that, I won't read anything. The new award, Graduate of the Last Decade Award, gold, this award recognized a CAP graduate with 10 years or less of experience since receipt of their latest Ball State University degree. So that's the criteria. And we have, we're recognizing five and we're gonna go alphabetical and we're gonna go with Elizabeth Boone first. Is Elizabeth on the line? I see Elizabeth, wave to us Elizabeth. Yes. Yep, very good. So Elizabeth, I'm just gonna give a few comments and then we're gonna, in about uh, one minute, you're gonna be on. Um, so I'm just gonna offer a few thoughts. And one of the things that's interesting to me about Elizabeth is she 
has worked at a variety of different firms, a variety of different locations, uh, several of which are in New York City and has worked with SOM. And currently is with, uh, she's a partner with Reynolds and Ash, which is a Colorado, New Mexico firm. She's out in the West. And Nina and the team did a good job of having some information about each grad. So we're gonna use the first time to explain this with Elizabeth and the rest, I'll go faster. So they were asked, give three words that remind you of your time spent at CAP. So Elizabeth's were innovative, collaborative, collaborative, and transformative. And I have, for each one, I'm gonna add just a little quick couple words or a sentence. And for me, it's, she's really established connections that, are, that will vault her through her career. So Elizabeth, please take, take the floor and offer your thoughts, if you would, please. You have about three or four minutes. Great, thank you, Gary, for the introduction. Uh, first, I wanted to thank Andrea Swartz for the nomination. To be nominated and ultimately selected as an award recipient is quite an honor. Thank you. Um, since being nominated, I've been thinking quite a bit about what I had wished that I had known as a student. And so I'd really like to share this opportunity to expand on my advice to current students. And I don't know how many are on the call today or how many will discover this on the blog, but hopefully this can kind of trickle down um, and really make an impact on how they approach their CAP careers. So to start, I wanted to say, work hard, it pays off. Everything that I've accomplished to date is due to hard work. And honestly, what I've lacked in talent or ability, I've compensated for with hard work. Um, next, I would say speak up and participate. And this is actually how I came to be offered a position at SOM New York. Beyond my studies, I had attended conferences, submitted work for journals, and participated in a conversation outside of the university setting. Um, I would recommend to have passion, to love what you do. This passion enriches your work, and often the creative things that I do every day don't even feel like work. For students struggling or thinking about a different major, I'd like to say that architecture is a wonderful foundation for many professions. If the typical architectural path doesn't suit you, there's plenty of opportunity um, for other options in the field. Take some time to explore alternatives within the industry. After graduation, um, some of them even pay better. Um, definitely surround yourself with individuals who are more talented than you. Find a mentor. And this is my chance to thank everyone who has helped me accomplish this gold award. From my talented peers of Project One, Kevin Klinger with the IDF, as well as my colleagues at SOM, including Ibar's Aussie and partner David Childs, Surrounding yourself with talent elevates your own work and provides a template for success. Next, I'd recommend setting goals. This is standard for any list of advice, but it works. Every current student should take the time to do this. Express confidence, but also be critical in your work. After watching the very best in the industry for many years in New York, Confidence will go a long way in advancing your career, but not without the well-considered work to back that up. Stay inspired through travel and maintenance of a healthy lifestyle. Beyond inspiring your own creativity, these experiences make you a more interesting person and help you connect on a different level with clients and peers. Related to that, I would recommend nurturing personal connections. This network that you are part of at the College of Architecture and Planning is full of future collaborators or even clients. Finally, always think conceptually. Tying your work back to a foundational idea is best practice for design, but also everyday tasks. Ultimately, good design is simple. Efficiency and structure, program and performance is true and truth is beauty. I do cherish my memories at CAP and thank you all for the honor of this award. Thank you, Elizabeth. I forgot to mention, she has a Bachelor of Architecture degree, 2010. 
And the other thing that Nina is asking me, note please the chat, please offer your comments and thoughts in the chat as we go along as well. For goal number two, Jake Dietrich, uh, Bachelor of Urban Planning, 2012. And uh, Jake, Jake is interesting in the sense that he has primarily worked at Millhouse, which is a in the Indianapolis development of housing, a company that develops housing. And we all know the need for good housing. We all know the need for quality housing. And Jake has worked his way through that organization. And um, the name of that company is Millhouse. He actually, I believe, had his internship there too, if I recall. So three words for, for Jake are formative, inspiring, invaluable in the terms of his experience at CAP. And uh, my, my words for him are collaboration with everyone. You know, he handles projects from conception, buying land, all the way to opening, and that takes a lot of collaboration to get her done. Uh, Jake, please, your comments. Uh, thank you, and uh, thanks to everyone who is attending tonight. Uh, I know we all wish we could be in person, but it's great to be uh, here uh, on Zoom with you all. Uh, I want to thank Scott Truex for the nomination. Scott's been a, a great mentor for so many over the years, and myself included, and I appreciate what he did uh, almost 10 years ago, putting me in a uh, situation where I got to meet uh, my future boss, Tad Miller, the CEO of Millhouse, who I've uh, had the pleasure of working with for the past 10 years. As was mentioned, I interned with Millhouse uh, almost 10 years ago and have grown with the company, and I'm so thankful for that opportunity. Uh, I really want to thank uh, specifically tonight, my family, my parents, and my wife, Anna, for the support in the last however many years uh, and helping me get to where I am today. And I think the words of collaboration are especially uh, applicable to, to me and really everybody that comes out of CAP. You know, nothing in the built environment uh, happens because of one person. It happens because of the teams that we find ourselves uh, being a part of. I remember back to our studio days when as a perfectionist, they often loathe working on teams uh, for um, studio projects because I wanted everything done uh, my way. And I've realized uh, that it's so important to surround yourself and you need good people around you to make yourself better, to make the projects you're working on better and ultimately breed success. I would encourage all of the students that are in CAP today and future students to uh, be reminded of how important it is, especially as you uh, embark on your first uh, few, first few jobs out of school, to surround yourself with peers and mentors and leaders that you want to that you you yourself uh, want to reflect. I can tell you how much uh, I absorb from my peers and the leaders at Millhouse in my first few years, and it's uh, just very important to put yourself in a position uh, that you want to go to work every day and surround yourself with the people that you will be there with. Uh, I look forward to being a part of the CAT family for many years to come, representing uh, everything that this college has to offer, which is uh, innovation, collaboration, and forward thinking, and supporting the students uh, that go through the doors uh, again for many years to come. Thanks again for the honor of this award. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Jake. Uh, next up is Daniel Liggett. Daniel had his urban design and landscape degree 2011. And uh, Dan is, a, as I say, a landscape, he's actually more of a landscape designer in practice. And one of the things that's interesting is that Dan has worked for the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, as well as Rundell Ernstberger, which is a fine landscape firm um, with Ball State ties from the very beginning, and has done an adjunct professor with Ball State. Dan's three words to remind him of CAP are family, rewarding, inventive. And uh, my, my words for Dan are, as landscape designers, they do projects just on landscape work, and then they also are designers for buildings. And so that collaboration and that ability to be a chameleon and work both ways is, is a very important personality trait that, that they begin to have. Dan, please offer your thoughts. Yeah, great. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. Perfect. Uh, it's tough to follow Jake, but I'll do my best and, and Elizabeth, but want to thank obviously fans and uh, friends and family and my wife, Katie, who uh, my girlfriend at the time and cap fed me all those nights that I was there. Um, <laughs> and I see a few professors um, on the call, Martha, 
And I, I minored in construction management too. So I see uh, Jones and Foots on the call too. I remember having them as well. Um, I would like to tell just a brief story. And I think it best describes my time at CAP. And it was my freshman year, first studio. And hopefully we all have that memory of what that very first studio was. And um, it was uh, quite an experience, but the, I remember walking in and I had Sonny Palmer and Sonny scared me to death. I, I grew up on a farm in the middle of Indiana and Sonny, you know, a Columbia graduate, I believe it was just a, you know, the different side of the world. Um, but Sonny told us that first day that our, our classmates would teach us more than anyone else in the building. And that was kind of hard to believe um, because looking back at my classmates, I kind of have a hard time. They actually were the ones that were in, instrumental in teaching me things, but, but they were. And the, the person who nominated me was Danny O'Brien and he works up in Chicago and could probably just as easily be in, in this position right now. Um, but my classmates were, those were the ones that kind of always taught you, you know, how's the way you can do it faster? How's the way to improve the, your design? Um, but they were also the ones who were more supportive too. They were just helping you uh, rest assured that what you were doing was right or you're not going to fail out um, and be a bum. And so those people are, I think, the ones that probably helped push me through. I think a lot of what Elizabeth said was dead on and that those people um, were really instrumental in developing me um, along the way. Um, and I, I guess my words to students and, and really everybody on the call is just act like a classmate to, to the people you work with, um, whether they're your superiors or whether they're your clients or um, whether they really you know, might in, indeed be your classmates. Um, those are the people that, you know, they're going to support you whether you're right or wrong and just try to help you along the way. So those would be my words to everyone. And again, thank you for the, uh, the award and look, look forward to hearing from some of the others tonight. Very good. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, next up is Emily McGowan McGee and she has a Bachelor of Science in Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science of Architecture and Fine Arts degree for 2011 from Ball State and then a master's of degree from uh, master's degree in healthcare from Clemson. And that was 2016. In looking at Emily's portfolio, if you will, and what she's done, she has focused on healthcare architecture and planning, worked with several, we're actually worked with three of the big, the big firms that get a lot of experience, currently works with HOK, and actually has done a couple of interesting things to me, and that is worked with Mass Design Group and did a fellowship in Africa. I think I'm correct in Africa, stayed with a village and worked with them. Uh, uh, she was a global health fellow and Troy Thompson will appreciate this, uh, was a, had a, uh, worked an archeological explorer in Sardis, Turkey. Uh, so uh, my words are, her, her words are enriching, engaging and expansive. And she really has expanded her horizons internationally. Emily, you're up, young lady. Emily, you're, you're, uh, you're muted, Emily. You're muted. Unmute okay, yourself. can everyone hear me now? Okay, sorry. You can. You're <laughs> now. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for the um, introduction and, and hi everyone. It's, uh, it's so good to see so many familiar faces on here. It certainly doesn't feel like it was that long ago uh, when I was a CAP student and it's hard to believe that that's uh, coming up on 10 years now. Um, I wanna first uh, start by thanking the Ball State CAP Alumni Committee, uh, Gary Vance, Dean Ferguson, and all the organizers uh, for hosting today's event. I can appreciate very much that planning anything during a pandemic is especially hard. And I'm just so thrilled we were able to still have the opportunity to, uh, to gather and celebrate virtually. Um, it's an enormous honor to be among those receiving this inaugural gold award uh, tonight. And, and the truth is I couldn't have asked for a better foundation uh, to have started from. Much of what I've been able to accomplish in the last 10 years uh, and thus far in my career, I, I very much owe to the experiences and the education that I had here. 
some of you might remember me as the uh, the Sparky who uh, eccentrically had her hands in just about everything else while deciding to also try architecture. Um, my path was atypical and involved pursuing a dual degree in art, uh, traveling out of a backpack on the world tour program and even led me to surveying ruins over the summer on the Sardis uh, archeological dig in Turkey. Uh, so when I was asked to reflect on those three words, uh, describing my time here, uh, enriching, engaging, and expansive came pretty easy. Uh, but nocturnal was a close fourth because I remember all those, uh, all those late nights in the studio. Uh, Ball State fostered a freedom of learning through exploration. And these exposures invoked a conviction, uh, a deep conviction within me that architecture is a catalyst that extends far beyond our built environment and into the health, uh, the lives and the history of the places and the people that it serves. And our role as designers is not neutral. Um, the values that drive our agency also very much hold us accountable to the, the impacts that we create. My diverse career path uh, since leaving has turned out to be just as atypical. So it's safe to say that not a lot changed <laughs> in the last nine or 10 years, not even the, uh, the living out of a backpack part. Uh, <laughs> or traveling the world. Uh, my work has been focused at the intersection of design, uh, health and advocacy and uh, operating through a lens of service uh, within a, a greater global reach. Um, I've been fortunate to be involved uh, living and working immersively in a variety of cross-cultural contexts and leveraging uh, design to create healing environments and community-based projects all over the world. I wanna uh, thank everyone here for their support along the way, especially my, my husband, Dan, my parents, Kim and Mike, which it's my dad's birthday today. So happy birthday, dad. <laughs> and also my in-laws that are on, Ginny and Bill. Thank you so much uh, to everyone who's on the screen, professors, colleagues, friends, and family that contributed to my growth and supported this nomination uh, from the first exposure I had in healthcare design at MSKTD to finding mentors like Troy Thompson, first on the dig at Sardis and later working together at Smith Group. Uh, to David Allison and the Masters of Architecture and Health program at Clemson, where I received the Global Health Corps Fellowship and moved to Rwanda to design prototype hospitals, uh, working with Mass Design Group. And now to my HOK family, where I currently work uh, with alumni like Paul Strom on large uh, scale healthcare projects, transforming my hometown in Indianapolis. So it's been quite a journey. Um, and I'm humbled, I'm deeply honored, and it makes me so proud to represent CAP in all that I do. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next decade's hold. Uh, thank you all so much again, and big congratulations to all the other winners tonight. Very good. Thank you, Emily, and special thanks to all the parents and in-laws and family members who are joining us today as well. Our next final gold award is Lauren Peterson, Urban Planning and Development 2011. Uh, interestingly, Lauren has had a, a variety of, of roles intern at the Department of Agriculture, Fulbright Scholar to Poland, worked for Salesforce, now works for TechPoint, which is an entrepreneurial and technology company, and been on many volunteer boards. Interestingly to us Ball State folks, she's been on the Women's Fund uh, for Ball State, and at the celebration of Lucina Ball's daughter's 100th birthday, uh, the Women's Fund, the first Women's Fund of Ball State was was formed, which really was, uh, was actually at that ceremony, it was quite moving. Lucina was the sixth child of, there were five Ball brothers in Lucina, Lucina Hall. She was the sister in a course of 19, the 1910s. Uh, the sister could not be involved in the bister, business and how far we've come and uh, delighted that we have a women's fund now, long overdue. I think we have a, oh, excuse me, uh, Lauren's uh, three words, enlightening, inspiring, and fun. I wish I could ask Lauren about the fun part. Um, and my, my word, the overall impact. I think we have a video. Lauren cannot join us. And she has taped a video. She's on the move. I'm traveling, but I do want to say how absolutely honored I am to have received the College of Architecture and Planning Graduate of the Last Decade Award. There have been so many professors and staff and faculty members at CAP during my time and even over the last decade that have helped fuel me into the young professional 
that I am today that I'm so grateful for and truly want to extend my deepest gratitude. Three of you in particular stand out. First and foremost, Lauren Deeg, thank you for allowing me to explore truly what the art of placemaking is all about and fall in love with it, not only as a professional, but as someone who cares deeply about their community. I remember the first time it was introduced to me at what I called architecture camp, but what was more formally known as the summer uh, design thinking workshop. Your inspiration, your creativity, your determination that you've instilled in me truly has been remarkable. Thank you so much. Secondly, Nihal Pereira, you empowered me to think about my role as a responsible global citizen. And for that, I'm forever grateful. You were there with me through the seasons, through the drafts, through my applications for international scholarships, and ultimately helped to encourage me to apply for the Fulbright Scholarship, which I was um, very lucky and fortunate to have received um, after I graduated from Ball State. It allowed me to pursue my representation as an advocate and cultural ambassador in Poland for a year. And I owe so much of that season in life to your encouragement and belief in myself. And last, but certainly not least, Scotty, Scotty Truex, you have been a gem to me. I was so deeply happy when I saw my name uh, announced as one of your first studio cohorts um, the first day of studio my freshman year. Not only have you been a mentor, a teacher, and a dear friend, but you've coached me through so many of life's seasons and I've learned so much from you. Thank you for encouraging me to truly lean into what drives me, not just placemaking, not just solving for poverty and economic development, but really making an impact through my community and giving back to those that need it most. I have become closest friends with those that went our studio group and even bridesmaids as well. I am grateful for you and your leadership and everything that you've done to support me over the past few years. I also have to extend a heartfelt thank you, heartfelt thank you to my mom, Deborah, my sister Claire, and my fiance Luke. You've been by my side um, really forever, and I just know how important my success is to you. And ultimately, you are at the heart of everything that I do. Thank you so much for seeing the light in me and breathing fire into my world. And for those of you that are joining from afar today or perhaps watching this recording afterwards, I want to encourage you to embrace your fellow Cardinals. I am probably one of the most loyal Cardinals you will ever meet and just want to encourage you to pay it forward. We didn't get where we were going alone. Please give up your time, your mentorship, your leadership, your financial contributions to help the next generation of Cardinals um, really make a difference in their community. I am where I am today because of those that have invested in me. And I really feel like the College of Architecture and Planning has given us such a special gift. And really, if we do our jobs well, we give that gift right back. Thank you so much. I'm honored to have been chosen as the graduate of the Last Decade Award winner for the College of Architecture and Planning. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Lauren. Um, before I forget, I did on the call, if you, as you zoom through, I want to recognize Jamie Acton. Jamie Acton is with us today. He is a Ball State uh, person. He is the Vice President of Alumni Development. Um, Jamie has been on the job a couple years, but Jamie, I think, is particularly interested in architecture. Uh, he's from Columbus, Indiana, born and raised, and he came to Ball State from IIT in Chicago. And so he has always had a bit of architecture in his blood, and uh, he's here with us tonight. So thanks, Jamie, for being here. Next up is our Outstanding Alumni Award. This award recognizes a CAP graduate with 11 to 35 years of experience within either the design and construction industry, the built environment, their community, or society at large. Again, a broad definition, a broad view. We have six recipients of that. Uh, again, just remind people to make a note of the web, the, the link to find all the descriptions and all the information about all of our award winners. First up is Tammy Butler. So Tammy is an urban regional planning graduate, 1997. Um, 
Tammy actually has some government experience, a lot of government experience. She was with the family, FSSA, Family Social Services, State of Indiana, Indiana Budget Agency, Indiana General Assembly. Um, Tammy, Tammy had some power there. She was, she's working with all those folks and the, way, the Ways and Means, the Ways and Means Committee, which was well, my note about the power. She then formed 16 years ago, Engaging Solutions, which is a multifaceted management firm that consults and has community outreach. And uh, her three words that reminds her of her time at CAP, Charette's, Linda, and Friendship. And my words for Tammy is, she gets it done. Tammy, please offer your thoughts and comments. Thank you um, so much. I have to say that tonight I am beyond humbled um, to receive this award. And so sincere gratitude, um, Dean Ferguson, um, president of the CAP um, Executive Alumni Board, Gary Vance, the CAP Executive Alumni Board and the CAP faculty. I'm honored to be nominated by Dr. Teresa Jeter and thankful for my mom and dad um, that are on the line because my Ball State experience started with them um, packing me into a two-door green Grand Am um, that was filled to the um, to beyond the doors <laughs> being able to close. And we drove those 12 hours from Charleston, South Carolina to Muncie, Indiana. And all I knew at that time was David Letterman. And I, it's um, really funny because my um, mom had actually said she wasn't going to go um, and that my dad and I would make the trip. And my mom decided as we were backing out that she actually wanted to make the trip. So we had to repack the car and leave some stuff. An hour after we arrived, in Muncie, um, they had to take a, uh, they had a Greyhound bus that was waiting to take them back to Charleston, South Carolina. I got to my apartment and didn't realize that there was no um, bed um, and that it was not a furnished um, apartment. And lo and behold, out of nowhere um, came Dr. Linda Keyes, um, who was my professor at Ball State. And she um, was a blessing um, to me. And I will say to professors, um, be a Linda. And why do I say that is because she was one of those that filled every gap um, that you would have as a student while also pushing you to go um, beyond what you thought you would be able to, to do. Um, and then she had a motto when we were working on projects that we could not eat until we finished because food would slow us down. Um, and so that's what we loved about Dr. Um, Linda Keyes. Um, what I will say to other professors is to be a Scott Truex. And the reason I say that is because Scott took us outside of the building. Um, my time in Sandtown enhanced my vision and my introduction to CCDA helped me link my faith to community and to planning. I will also um, say to students, laugh often, celebrate your victories and learn from your opportunity. Have fun and don't get boxed in. Love everyone. You will meet and connect with people that don't look like you, but they belong um, and they deserve to have a voice in the process. Um, I will tell you to plan with intention. Um, don't plan for people, but with them. And why is this important? Um, because I had a boss as uh, Gary was just talking about, um, Representative Bill Crawford, who was the chairman of Ways and Means. He was the first African-American um, chair of the Ways and Means Committee. And I was working with him one day and we were planning and trying to um, have all of these meetings um, about a bill that was about to be passed. And I said, there's, there's no way we're gonna be able to hear all of these voices and continue to allow um, people to testify and he said, one thing that you will learn about um, this process is that when people are not at the table, they're on the menu. And so it's very important that we plan with intention to make sure that people are at the table and they're not on the menu. Um, I have been just very humbled um, to be able to receive this award um, and most importantly, the person that recommended me for this award, Dr. Teresa Jeter, um, because she's the one that taught me how to drive in the snow um, when I ended up in Muncie, Indiana. I was interning for her in Anderson, Indiana. And so, of course, 
being a Southern belle, I made that phone call to her and I said, um, so what do you want me to do today? Um, it's snowing. And so she said, so you're going to be late. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so I got in that green Grand Am and went from Muncie to Anderson um, to the Martin Luther King Memorial Commission. And um, I made it there. I took a deep breath, went in. And um, while I still now will Uber um, when it snows, I have recognized that you have to do it afraid. Um, and that's what's important about a planner. Why? Because the work that we do often does not wait. There are those that are waiting on us um, for the next um, development to be able to happen, for the next community that needs to take place, and for the next opportunity to be able to engage um, so that someone else's life can be made better. And so I'm grateful for each and every person um, that has contributed to where I am today. For my partners, um, as we started Engaging Solutions, um, Debbie, Charles, Benita, and being able to work alongside them where we had a firm that included both um, planners and then um, accountants and auditors. And we would not have been able to do that without the experiences that I gained um, at Ball State in the CAP program. So thank you tonight for um, this recognition and an opportunity to continue to be able to give back to the university that I love and where I still have my best friend today that I met there at Ball State, uh, Clara Thigpen. And I'm grateful for my two boys, Miles and BJ. And while they decided to go to Purdue, um, it was because of the experiences that I had there at, at Ball State and being able to meet um, Brian um, Robinson that those two boys exist today. Um, and so I'm grateful. Um, yeah all that has been afforded unto me Thank you tonight for this recognition. Thank you, Tammy. At least those boys went to in-state school, Purdue. <laughs> you kept them in-state. Next up is Ed Gerns. Ed is a Bachelor of Architecture, 1986, and then University of Illinois, 1990. And Ed, Ed is someone who's interesting that he has specialized as he worked through the firm in Chicago of Wiss, Janie, and Esther. Elster. Elsner. Uh, he actually has evolved to be a historic preservation and someone who works on iconic buildings for historic preservation and primarily masonry buildings really all over the country. I don't have a submission or from me, but it's some iconic buildings we all recognize and, and an important and interesting role is to save those buildings. And so uh, historic preservation uh, slant to an architect. And so um, Interesting, interesting career and uh, known all over the country for his work in that regard. Uh, his three words at while I cap challenging, creativity, and appreciation. And uh, my two words are preserving history. Ed, you would offer some comments, please, and thoughts? Sure, thanks, Gary. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank the Cook family for nominating me. Um, I met Dave at Ball State my freshman year and 40 years ago, I'd like to consider him a lifelong friend and his son actually works for our company as well. So it's been great seeing him develop over the years. Um, I think Elizabeth said at first of uh, succeeding is about surrounding yourself by people who are smarter than you. And I think that's been um, one of the keys to my success at the company at WJE. Um, one of them is on the phone or is on this call now. She. Um, actually started out as a mentee for me. And now I consider her a colleague and the ultimate success of, of that is she is also or was until recently my boss as well. So um, I take a lot of pride in that. And last but not least, um, at the time, my girlfriend and now my wife of 35 years, um, none of this would have been possible without the support of my family and in particular, my wife, Kim. Uh, I think that's about all I have to say. A lot of what has been said before, I couldn't agree with more. So thank you very much for this honor. Ed, thank you so much. Uh, our next outstanding alumni award, Michael Johnson, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture 2004, and then a Master of Urban Design in 2008 from University of Michigan. And he's with the Smith Group and has been primarily through his career. He's co-director of the Urban Design Studio of the Smith Group. And uh, I kind of call Michael a planner's planner, and I, I'm a planner, and he's, he's a planner extraordinaire, planner 
to the nth degree. He's worked for major Fortune 500 corporations. He's worked for university. He's done the mass, most recent master plan for IU Bloomington and uh, a really, really strong planner at quite bluntly at a very young age when we kind of think of architect years. You've heard of dog years, kind of like an architect years and uh, design professional years, he's young. Uh, his three words, while at cap, empowering, exhausting, and rewarding. And my, my two for uh, Michael, and I've had the opportunity to meet him several times, is forward thinking. Michael, you're, you got the floor, sir. Thanks, Gary, and uh, thanks, everyone. I don't, uh, I don't feel as young, perhaps, as I am with uh, my two kids that are running around the house right now. So, um, but uh, just really uh, humbled, honored uh, to receive this award. Gary, thanks to you and uh, Nina, Dave, and the whole uh, committee um, for this honor. Um, you know, just incredible, I think, to be considered as um, part of such prestigious company, many of whom I consider uh, mentors and, and role models. And, and Dave, I want to give a special thanks to you. Um, you've played uh, just been a really important part in my past creation, my life, probably more than uh, more, more than you know. So, um, you know, I don't also don't really have words necessarily for um, what it feels like to be recognized by an institution that has given me so much throughout different phases of my career, both as a student, uh, as a graduate in the profession, uh, had the great opportunity and honor to, to lead the master plan for Ball State, um, uh, you know, to, to collaborate uh, as a guest lecturer and um, through some cross-disciplinary studios and, and even as a commencement speaker. Um, and, you know, quite simply put, it's, um, you know, CAP changed the trajectory of my life. It changed the way I approached problem solving. Um, and, you know, for that, I'm forever grateful. Uh, I found landscape architecture at CAP, uh, had, had no idea uh, what the profession uh, was before, before coming to school. Um, it's, it's, it's in those studios, um, working with several people on the, on the call today, you know, where learn to question everything to make our problems bigger, um, ensure we're solving the right problem, which I think in this, uh, in, in, uh, you know, what we're going through right now is, is, is really important. Um, so, and these skills have, have allowed me to be flexible, nimble, um, you know, uh, all of, all of those things. And so, um, Proud to be at Smith Group, proud to be leading the urban design team, a, a really uh, cool uh, multidisciplinary team, uh, working with just incredible people like Troy and, uh, um, you know, uh, just just really cool. So thanks again uh, to everyone for this honor and, um, you know, for the opportunity to continue to connect with this, this awesome place. Thanks, Michael. Uh, next up, Greg Klaskowski, uh, Bachelor of Architecture, 1994. Uh, Greg first went to California and was out there for 20 years working uh, for a couple firms and had some design award winning work. Returned to Chicago 2013. Currently works for what I think is one of the coolest names of a firm, Papa George Hams and Park, Chicago. I, lo I love that. Uh, and, you know, Greg, you have more talent artistically and the ability to sketch than most people should have. Uh, Greg, Greg is just incredible, uh, has incredible hand, beautiful sketches, and uh, it's not fair. Greg, you're up. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gary. Thank you. Um, I have to start by saying that this is a really great honor. I, I was really actually surprised to be on, recognized this year. Um, I, I can only say that if you take my career and work as being remarkable and worth noting, it's a direct reflection of the foundation, this college has given me the relationships I've formed and, and the ones I continue to form because of my connection to CAP. Uh, that said, I really want to spend my time thanking a lot of people um, more than anything. Uh, thanks first, of course, to the CAP Executive Alumni Board, including Dave, Gary, and assistants from NINA in particular. Um, I'd like to thank all the incredible professors and educators. I, I'm not going to name everyone I should, but of course, Rod, who's on the call, uh, continuing uh, sketching with uh, Tony. Um, uh, Michele, uh, John, Andrea, Art, M Michelle, uh, Woodshop, Bob. Um, you know, these were a lot of diverse influences that pulled us in conflicting directions sometimes, but it really made for a really rich experience and shaped uh, who I am today. Uh, I need to thank first the class of 1995. I'm not quite that young, but uh, Jamie Lake from that class nominated me and everybody from that class has always been really supportive. 
I do want to thank our class of 1994. It's just a really special group of exceptional people that I graduated with. We actually still, almost all of us meet up every few years in different places around the country. I'm grateful to have kept these friends. I share advice with Danielle. I've got group tests all year long last year with, uh, I'll say Neil, Reese, Gunny, and Gigi. They know who they are. Um, helped me get through 2020. Uh, and I'm exceptionally really grateful. My uh, good friend Paul Benigno is now just living 10 minutes away from me since we've moved back. Um, I'm grateful when we moved out to San Francisco after graduation, I had Tim Gray as a mentor who is now teaching at, uh, at CAP. Uh, and then 17 years later, I came back and Catherine Baker, uh, who I think everybody knows, introduced me to her husband, Tim Kent. Uh, he introduced me to his partner at Papa George Hames, Brian Kidd, and uh, I was just now promoted to senior associate and now a part owner there. So I'm really grateful that how all that came to be. Uh, I finally want to thank my family too. Uh, my sister's on the call and I'm proud of her and her family. Um, my parents are also on the call and I'm thankful for how they supported me and my talents at an early age and all through school. Uh, they're now grandparents to new to uh, my new or my two phenomenal children. They're twins, uh, Liam and Lilia. Uh, they both had drawings published in Architectural Record and they have drawings published in Architecture Burke by age six. So they're art signing me uh, with their sketching abilities already. Um, finally, I want to thank my wife, Nicole. Um, she's practically CAP alumni. She worked with Uva Kohler. She joined us in Architalia. Uh, and I have to thank her for our love and support uh, our venture for the West Coast and back. We've been married for uh, over 27 years. Um, I'll wrap up real quick with a response I wrote for this award. Um, I wrote, to this day, I continue to hold great reverence for my time at CAP. It was the basis for my work ethic and perseverance, uh, my talent tempered by humility, uh, academic discourse balanced by a sense of humor, and my appreciation for the world and the remarkable people around me. So thank you again, and uh, congratulations to everybody else who are uh, being honored tonight as well. Thank <laughs> Thanks, Greg. And Thank uh, by the way, Greg, you and your parents have mo way much more talent than they deserve. All you deserve, <laughs> you really outshine us then if mom and dad are good too. Thank you. Uh, next up, Lindsay Peckinpah. Lindsay uh, is a Bachelor of Architecture, 1999. Uh, Lindsay uh, works out of Chicago, although she still lives in Indiana, I happen to know, basically at the state line. Um, and she is a practice leader for, leader for Perkins and Will Chicago uh, in charge of sports, recreation and entertainment. Uh, she, there was a merger of firms, which is how she kind of ended up there at Chicago. I can't remember the specifics. Started her career in Denver. And over the last couple of years, I've had the pleasure of working with Lindsay on a specific project where I represent the owner. Um, her three words are formative, intense and nurturing. And uh, my two words from Lindsay are client focused. Lindsay? It's your, it's your uh, floor here. Yeah. Hi, Gary. Thank you so much. So um, I love that you chose client focus for me, Gary, um, because you were my client. And I've been fortunate over the past couple of decades to have some, some exceptional clients. You're the only one that's nominated me for an award, though. So you may be my best client ever. Sure. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you to the CAP Alumni Committee as well. Many of you who I know professionally and have a lot of respect for. Um, Andrea Schwartz, who has been you know, a mentor of mine since she had me, or rather tolerated me in second year studio. Um, I now have the pleasure of serving with Andrea on the um, professional advisory board for the art department. You know, when I think back at CAP, um, Professors like Tony Costello, Rod Underwood, um, Bob Kester really helped shape me as a young person. And I also have to give a lot of credit to my personal support network. Um, I want to say thank you to my friends, Eric McNevin and Jen Lathrop, who are on the call. Um, they're classmates of mine from 99 as well. Eric um, nominated me for this award, and he's a past recipient as well. Um, Eric made the mistake of sitting next to me in studio almost every year. Um, he found out pretty quickly that I didn't even know how to read an architectural scale. So, you know, somebody said earlier that you'll learn the most from your classmates and Eric pretty much got me through CAP <laughs> and Jen nurtured me through it. So thank you for being there for me. Um, always, you guys. I also want to give a shout out to my parents, um, David and Carol, who were on and my partner, Chris. Um, everyone on this call knows that we work in a very intense industry and it's a lot of hard work and CAP really prepares you for that, right? With the late nights and the incredible workload that we have. And it's so important that we shore ourselves with people that can 
bring you a meal, help you with a load of laundry and, you know, have your back. And, and I'm lucky to have that network. Um, I've been fortunate in my career to be able to hire and to mentor a lot of young people. And I want to say that the people we pick up out of CAP and out of Ball State are exceptional. And they're exceptional because they come out of the program with a collaborative mindset and they come out of the program with a servant leadership and a real heart towards service in our communities. And, you know, somebody said earlier tonight that you don't necessarily have to be the smartest or the most talented person in the room, but you have to be willing to collaborate and you have to care about what you do. And that's really what CAP has instilled in me and allowed me to do the community focused work that I do. So um, thank you for setting us a wonderful foundation and I'm really honored to receive this award. So. Thanks, Lindsay. Yep. Uh, our final outstanding alumni award is John Urbans. I hope I pronounced that correctly, John. Bachelor of Urban Planning, 1995. And John's a good example of someone that five years ago uh, we would not have considered for an award. Yet on the other hand, when you hear me describe what he's been up to, you're going to say, that's a lot of impact. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of important work that he's done. He actually has lived in Fort Wayne during his his. Uh, Got to go back. Sorry. His three words, inspirational, challenging, and fun. And my words for him are servant leader. Um, sorry. John is the director, or started as the director of the community development at Fort Wayne, then moved to the executive vice president of Greater Fort Wayne, and now is president of Greater Fort Wayne. And uh, Fort Wayne is really on the move in terms of what they've been up to. And um, John, it's up to you, but, but great job up there in Fort Wayne. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate that. Um, I want to thank the selection committee. Uh, I want to thank all the faculty. Um, there's, a, there's a number of faculty that have had a direct impact on my life. Um, and it started right day one in the accelerated summer program um, with my first studio with Rod Underwood and Jim Segety. And that challenging inspiration and fun started on day one. Um, it was one of the toughest summers that I had trying to stick with it, make sure I got through all 16 hours that summer. Um, but it really helped shape my, my life through that. Um, and then I think about uh, professors that aren't with us anymore, like J. Paul Mitchell and Linda Keyes and um, uh, Francis Parker, who was my thesis advisor, you know, really helped develop who we were uh, as students. And then uh, I can't forget Scott Truex, who I know is on the call here today. He's been a great mentor and great friend. Uh, for the last 25 years since I left the program. I, uh, he's had me back most years to talk to Plan 100 uh, and try and convince the students that there's something more out there than architecture and landscape architecture and there's the ability to have an impact on your community. And Gary, I like your word about servant leadership. Um, you know, what I loved about CAP was the real world experience that we were, we were given the chance to participate in. Uh, and it really taught us to work with all people, you know, and especially as we look at the world today, look at our nation, that's something that is a, is a, is a uh, ability that we all need, you know, work with people and solve problems. That's what it was all about. Um, it also challenged me to be a leader, you know, both in the studio and in class, but then when I got out, in, out into the working world, you know, CAP really prepared me to make that impact in my community. And I, I, I thank the committee for taking a look at, at the type of awards you are providing. Um, because as you look at what we have done, uh, when you look at urban planning, most of my class didn't stay in planning, didn't stay in design. And we've all taken different paths, whether it be from uh, you know, being a lawyer to the construction industry to um, the, you know, community development and economic development like I'm doing. You know, Fort Wayne was not a vibrant and growing place when I moved here 25 years ago. And I hit my anniversary in town tomorrow morning um, we'll hit my 25 years of working here in Fort Wayne and trying to impact the community. You know, we went from a community where we saw about a, a million dollars of investment in our downtown in the, in the decade of the 90s. And in the last decade, we've seen over a billion dollars of investment in our downtown. Uh, we've had four years in a row of a bil billion dollars in building permits in our community. And it's because of the solid planning that we've done over the last 25 years, uh, working with the community, making sure that we're a vibrant, prosperous, growing community. Um, and my CAP education really prepared me to work in that environment. Um, and especially with all the activity now, it, it taught me to multitask. It taught me to uh, how to get things done. Um, and I've just, I've, I've, I've enjoyed the work I've done in this field. 
And that was, uh, I wouldn't have been here without CAP. And I want to thank all of you. I want to thank, thank especially those professors that I mentioned. Um, you changed my life and you've helped me change my community. Thanks, John. Appreciate your comments. Um, and by the way, just want to th th thank all the faculty who are on the call. Nice to, nice to see you, uh, faculty and staff. Nice to see you getting your accolades, well-deserved accolades. Uh, now we're going to go to the Distinguished Alumni Award. This award recognizes a CAP graduate with a minimum of 36 years of experience or higher who have spent their career within either the design and construction industry, the built environment, their community, or society at large. And it really gives me great pleasure to announce or to, to announce both of these winners uh, because they've had those kinds of careers. Jim Andrews is our first. And, you know, we, we need to go back a little ways and remember our humble beginnings. Uh, 1965, Governor Brannigan was the one who said that we needed an in-state College of Architecture in Ball State. Um, Purdue and IU fought ferociously to get it. Governor Brannigan said, well, we want to make Ball State a university. If you recall, it's a teacher's college and really teacher's college in nursing. Um, he made that decision. It changed the trajectory, trajectory of our university. And so uh, started, I believe in 1966, Rod would know for sure. I think it started in 1966, the first class. And so Jim is a 71 grad of urban planning, but not from CAP. Urban planning was within the College of Business at that time. So our, so the, and Dave Ferguson may know the exact, how it all lined up, but we started with architecture in 1966. I think landscape by 69. So we added programs as we went along. So it, it truly was just architecture in day one. And so Jim is our honorary graduate of CAP with his planning 1971, but really very special to honor someone who has gone beyond, uh, our, beyond our borders, if you will, and was there at the very beginning. Um, so his, he has urban planning 1971 degree, which was the first year of the College of Architectures graduates. And so he has a college of business urban planning degree, uh, worked for a government agency out of school. I don't think that was for him. He bought the Henry Poor Lumber Company in Lafayette, kind of as an entrepreneur. Uh, he's gone through that. I mean, he still owns it. His family works for it. Uh, imagine the ups and downs relative to recessions we've had. Uh, Jim has been a, a steward and supporter of Ball State and has very strong support for our construction management program, construction management interior designer, the last two programs we've added, I think about three years ago. Uh, so Jim's words are networking, endurance, and momentum. And I have a note here, just lifetime support of Ball State and CAP. Jim, you're up, buddy. Oh, thank you, Gary. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's been 50 years, hasn't it? Yeah. Let's see, 71 to, to 2021. Well, that takes a while, but you know, first of all, I know there's some undergraduates on the on this call, and I'd like to encourage them to dig in where they are, not just in into your major. Dig into the school, dig into the people around you. You can pick up so many things. Uh, um, I was in I was into a lot of different things: uh, swimming, uh, student government, uh, Sigma Chi House, uh, uh, bike a thon, all those kinds of things. One of the guys. He used to wake me up about 11 o'clock so I get to the radio station. I had a motorcycle, it was Dave Letterman. He had to get to get to work on time and he was always late. So, I mean, just things that, that you go through and I still have connections and friends and, and business partners who I met at Ball State. And I still have those, those connections today. Um, my, uh, between my junior and senior year, I got an internship with the state of Indiana working and planning. And, and it was, uh, to me, very eye-opening. I loved it. It was really something that, that, uh, was ex that excited me. And um, once I got out of school, I went to work for the state in, in administering uh, federal funds to develop um, master plans for, for oh, Southern Indiana, mainly Scott County. And, you know, I spent a whole lot of time a year doing that kind of thing. And and after a year in soul searching, I, also, I just decided I wasn't cut out to do all that, you know, to, to shuffle paper and, and go find this and paste that. Because back then, you, know, you hit, there weren't copy machines, okay? There was carbon paper, you know? So there was a whole lot of stuff going on. And 
so I ended up back in, in uh, Lafayette working for a, a good friend of mine uh, uh, who his son was a good friend of mine and he was killed and, and I kind of worked into the business it was construction it was a lumber business and boy I found it pretty darn fascinating and um, I also got involved in this is where my planning I think really came in into to play in development of our city um, and I'm talking about the river I'm talking about uh, parks I'm talking about recreation I served uh, eight years on the Tippecanoe County Council, and uh, uh, actually I served 16 years on Tippecanoe County Council and eight years on the City of Lafayette Board of Works. But during that time, we worked on developing the river, uh, and it's just a great project. We've got millions of dollars and lots of time in it, but it was something that I've just found very fascinating uh, uh, to invest back into the, the community and, and to try to light other people on fire. And, you know, some of those people are, are undergraduates right now, and and it's going to be something that you're going to look around when you when you get out. There's a lot of things. Don't just concentrate on, on what your major was in, but but get out there and do some different things. Uh, the State Wabash River Parkway Commission. We meet up and down the Wabash River um, uh, once a month, uh, different counties and different projects and what we're doing. And, and I still uh, inject uh, a lot of ideas and get a lot of ideas. And that's the networking part of this thing. I guess this networking is kind of a buzzword now, but back then that's what it was. I mean, I guess we didn't call it networking. It was just your buddies and all that stuff you hung around with. But um, endurance is something that you just never give up. You just keep doing it, whether you spend uh, 16 years on a county council, eight years on a Lafayette Board of Works, uh, four years on a swim team at Ball State, um, bike a thon, all that kind of stuff. You just stick with it until you get it and you get it right. But um, it's just been so such an amazing career um, for me to go through and now to realize that I used to be the youngest guy in a room. I don't think I'm the youngest guy in a room anymore, <laughs> you know. And unlike you, Gary, I didn't lose my hair. My hair went white early, you know. And so that was kind of a help because people thought you were older, older than you actually were. Yeah, Larry Rowan, what are you smiling about? Um, but but once again, I, I think investing back in yourself and in the community. And, and I learned this at Ball State. Last night, I was, I mean, last night, yesterday afternoon, late, Area Plan Commission. You know, I was before the Area Plan Commission were developed this uh, commercial subdivision. I've done residential subdivisions. And I think I still go back to, like I said, Planning 101, where I took these courses. And, you know, I remember Dr. Powell, who was a, a guy way back in, in the uh, probably late 60s, early 70s. And he got me fired up on I'm planning and going to the state and doing that stuff. I'm still calling up things that, that I, I use there. And, and it still keeps me very developed and in, in, in involved in my community. And, and I've got uh, uh, four children, uh, 15 grandkids, and uh, two of my sons are in the business with me. And, you know, my, my uh, uh, recommendation, I think, to anybody that's coming out of, out of college is get get as much business experience as you can get, uh, accounting, uh, uh, planning, budgeting, all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, I just think it's important that you just work around uh, education and keep doing that kind of uh, uh, investing back in yourself and what you're doing. So just keep it, keep it going. And I just wanna thank Ball State, uh, especially Larry Rowan who helped me immensely um, going back to like Ed Shipley, Don Park, I was involved in the alumni council as chair. So it was, it was a good thing. So I just want to thank everybody for this honor and, and I'll keep on investing back in Boston. Thank you. Jim, thanks. Thanks for your uh, mentorship, encouragement and, and collaboration and keeping in touch with everybody. And, and uh, in particular, also thanks for your uh, construction helping with construction management program yes well it's a if i had to do it you know today i that's that's where i'd be i would have been in that program but it wasn't there not too but late it's there now not too late jim no i thank you no i'll be back a lot i love you i love meeting those guys that are on fire and that pumps me up coming back to school coming back to campus it's also a great part of what we're doing very good thanks jim yeah. uh last but not least we have david Kroll. dave got a bachelor of architecture from iowa state first in 1982 so it's an interesting reversal a little bit. Then a Master of Historic Preservation in 1984 from, from CAP. Um, been the Director of Preservation 
that ratio for a number of years, I think in the 20s, high 20s. I uh, was working on a lot of significant noteworthy projects through the, the ratio work. And in his earlier days, uh, assisted with developing some of the federal and state historic rehab tax credits. Uh, he's been an adjunct professor at CAP, worked with Indiana Landmarks. So preservation has is, is really been his career. Uh, his three words are mentorship, encouragement, and collaboration. And my words are, he's been preserving the past. David, you're up. Okay, well, Gary, thank you. I hope you can hear me. Um, I've yeah. lost my internet connection. I'm doing this on a cell phone right now. And Larry, the snow has finally stopped. It's no longer silver dollar flakes out here in Hendricks County. Um, but good evening and, and, and thank you. Um, you know, I realize I'm the, the, the last thing standing between all of us and uh, the rest of our evenings. And if you're like me, you've been on uh, too many Zoom and, and team meeting calls uh, for the day. So um, uh, it's been almost 40 years uh, since I decided to move to Muncie and, and enroll at Ball State in the Preservation Program. Uh, Dave Hermanson and Andy Seeger were, were two uh, very uh, uh, helpful individuals for me as, as I was getting started. And I got to admit that it's probably one of the better decisions in my life that I've made uh, to, to, to go to CAP and, and uh, enroll in the program. Um, and the education I received there was uh, only the beginning, and it really set a stage for what's become a, a lifelong career. Uh, as Gary mentioned, uh, you know, I started out uh, – uh, at Iowa State and um, at the Ball State, and then uh, went from graduation and working for the uh, State Preservation Office, and been with Ratio now for almost 28 years. Um, it's been it's been a good run. And so, um, I've been fortunate to have the opportunities to to work on some some wonderful uh, architecturally significant, historically significant resources across the country, uh, literally stretching from Puerto Rico up to Alaska. And, you know, in addition to all the interesting buildings and the structures and sites, I've been able to, to get to, to meet and know some very interesting individuals who share similar interests and passions for preservation, uh, but also some who maybe come at things with a different point of view. And it, it takes all sorts to, uh, uh, to be able to, to make the world go around. Um, and I certainly wouldn't have been able to do any of this without the support of my uh, my wife who's sitting here next to me, I'm kind of commiserating about the internet connection here, um, or my, the rest of my family, who I think are probably still on the call, including my, uh, my granddaughter. Uh, and then also the assistance from the, my professional colleagues at CAP. Um, as Gary mentioned, I've been a, a visiting lecturer, adjunct faculty, uh, ran a, a field program down in Galveston for about 10 years, which was just uh, wonderful for, for me as well, for, for the kids. And then all of my, my colleagues at Ratio. So uh, in closing, I just want to thank you all again. Uh, appreciate the recognition, the, uh, the gold winners, the early ones. Boy, there's some very intelligent people there. And I'm, I'm thinking uh, we're in good hands with this industry, with them uh, moving up and taking control. So thank you again. Thanks, David. Dave Ferguson, you got some words of wisdom? Yeah, let me close this out. And thank you, Gary, for hosting this tonight. Um, you know, it's as much as we knew who and how wonderful all the awardees were, hearing from you just kind of puts a smile on your face. I see a lot of great comments in the chat. Um, since I've become Dean, uh, I've discovered something I thought I knew, but now it's, it's absolutely confirmed. Our best asset at CAP are our alumni. And uh, one of the things that I uh, pledged to do when I came in as Dean a couple of years ago was to create a connection to the alums that was the strongest in, in our history. And uh, I get to talk to alums every week. Uh, Roger Ninchwander and I are on, on calls uh, every Wednesday. And it's uh, the highlight of my week. It's a spectacular group. Uh, you're a great resource. Many of you are on our critique teams. If you're not and are interested, by all means, reach out to chairs and, and faculty. And uh, the other thing I hear is a strain uh, as a thread through all of this is is the impact of our faculty, of course our classmates, but our faculty uh, on, on the lives of all of our alums. And so please stay in touch with them, let them know. I think sometimes uh, we take it for granted and I'm an alum and, and I know that I, I uh, didn't tell my uh, profs enough how much they meant to me. And uh, particularly in these hard times where they're doing yeoman's work and really carrying a, a pretty heavy burden, 
uh, and our students' uh, spirits are up because they respect and, and see the value of, uh, of what the faculty are bringing in and, and everybody's pulling as a team, but uh, it, it does help to have those words of encouragement. But, uh, but let, let me just close out by saying thank you to everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of amazed that pretty much everybody stayed on the call. I've been watching the participant number. Uh, it's been great to hear everybody and uh, it's just a great way to end the evening. So uh, uh, everybody stay safe, uh, Godspeed, and we will uh, hopefully see you face to face in the, in the future, uh, not too far down the road. Good night, everybody. And Dave, if everybody would look at these uh, links and how to find the profiles for everybody, maybe jot them down. Uh, just in terms of the ability to read it. They're really nice profiles for everybody. Valerie and Nina did a good job on that. And Dave, can we do one other thing? I'd like to thank Troy and the Smith Group for the, and help me out with their uh, firm in residence uh, because we heard that name three or four times in terms of experience of some of our uh, winners, if you will. Yeah, and, and, and uh, let me just say that we launched the Furman Residence Program a, a couple of years ago, about three years ago. Uh, Troy and I wrote a grant together and, and got it launched, and it's now a mainstay. It's something that we want to keep going at CAP as we work with uh, uh, Smith Group and other firms, and um, that idea is taking wings. So uh, our, our connection to the professions has, uh, I think, never been stronger, and uh, we hope to really build on that as we go forward. Yeah, and Troy, thank you for leading that group. Smith Group's an important firm in our country and firm's one of the executive committee members or senior managers. He's one of the top three guys. That's what he is. Uh, so thank you for all that, Troy. And thanks everybody for all your, all your thoughts. Uh, makes you do, we all feel good to be a Cardinal. I'm not quite a fan of the chirp chirp, so I'm not gonna do that uh, personally, but nonetheless, thanks again for everybody joining us tonight. Amen. Good night, all. Sure. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, Good thank night. you. Thank you. Congrats, everybody. Yeah. Appreciate it. You all make me proud. Thanks, Rod. You had your hand in uh, training one heck of a lot of us. You trained me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The I've been listening for an hour and a half. I'm blown away. Impressive, poised, articulate. Makes you feel good about being a cap guy. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. That is that is true. Is that you, Roger? Thanks, thanks to all. This is a really special evening. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Glad you stayed with us, Roger. Good stuff. Yep. And Roger, you and I should talk. We've got a lot of new calls to make here. We've got opportunities.